I, if I mentioned this the other day, my mind is kind of not all there completely. Okay, sorry, but I got this back in many years ago in uh, Virginia, Billy's Crossroads, Virginia, and it's for uh, really for reeds. It cost me like five bucks, which I thought was pretty cool. Anyway, um, you didn't always have to put your harmonicas in a briefcase, you know, like they like the Blues Brothers. Anyway, I mean briefcases are convenient, but you can find other things to put them in. This holds about twelve harps. Okay, so, um, hope everybody's doing all right, and, um, I just had this idea, um, about trying to, to point out, um, about, well, first of all, when I meant style the other day, and when I was talking about that, I meant that over time you develop your own, uh, thing about what you want to do more than, like, something else. I mean, part of it is, uh, if you're working, you know, it's, it's related to that, I mean, if the gigs are only paying, like, for instance, in Europe, uh, or I don't know, in Seattle or something like that, I mean, it was, or other towns, I mean, any place, uh, it seems like that everything else has gone up, but wages for musicians, I mean, I, I, get, I guess at a band or a duo gig, you know, what I would get paid, maybe, maybe just for people like me that nobody knows about and somebody else, um, maybe 150, 200 bucks, I mean, if you're, really popular and have CD out or whatever that's known, you get more money. But if you're just your average, you know, musician, you know, there are those gigs, and and you can survive on that. I mean, I had other stuff going on, but it still, it sure helped out picking up. And then, um, but if you want to play with a duo, if you get to playing guitar or something and piano and then add the harmonica to it or together with the rack, then that's convenient to do that. Um... But anyway, the point is, is that uh, I'm doing other things, but this is what I was developing into. This is like what's going on now is how things are developed in my life. I mean, and that's what I kind of meant about style, that over time uh, things happen and you might be uh, playing in a band and then realize, oh, we're still getting paid the same every year. Well, I could do this with a guitar player and um, and get you know, the same amount of money, or at least what I'm getting paid in the band, you know, and, um, and there would be less fighting or something or whatever, you might, that might happen, um, um, it was, it's like, when I worked with R.L. Burnside in Europe, it was convenient that I was living there, and, but, uh, for most of that time, but, uh, cause they only had to pay for one plane ticket, and um, if he had brought, we later brought his son-in-law, ex-son-in-law, to uh, play some drums with us that year before he got into the major uh, trio with Fat Possum with his grandson and, and uh, guitar player Kenny Brown. But anyway, um, it's just kind of economics and what happens in your life. Uh, personally, um, I really did like playing dual stuff. I also really liked playing with the bass and drums. It was a lot of fun to have that, especially if they really knew what they were doing and they didn't um, overplay. And so that leads to this. Um, a lot of times harmonica players have a reputation and I was no excuse at, at over, I mean, no exception, um, at overplaying. I mean, the guitar players do it a lot. I guess um, any anybody can do it a lot. Uh, bass players, instead of playing simple uh, blues groove, they'll want to clutter it up with more notes. And so the idea, I think, of blues is that it's basically it's complicated to play it the right way, though it's simple music. And if you're born to that world, like R.L.'s grandson, Cedric Burnside, who's doing really well these days, but he's not playing straight blues either, he's doing other stuff. But, um, but you know, I saw him, I met him when he was just a kid, three years old. And so he was literally born into the world of North Mississippi blues, as were all of R.L.'s kids. But that's not uh, to say that they play like R.L. or that they, because time's gone on and they play their own way. But um, it just means that uh, blues might sound simple to play, but it's it's really hard to. Uh, I think, anyway, to, to do it the right way, and a lot of that involves, you know, listening to the real old guys that, that really laid down the foundation for us, 
uh, including Ariel, although he wasn't considered, he, he passed away in 2005, but he was not considered to be one of the old, uh, of course, one of the older, older people that recorded in the 20s and 30s, because he recorded much later. But uh, anyway, people like Mississippi Fred McDowell, who passed away in 1971, I believe, um, and who the Rolling Stones got their song, uh, You Got to Move From, um, that version. So, uh, to la if you're interested in that kind of style of music, or if you're interested in more rock and stuff, you know, something for some reason, Sun Seals pops into my head. He played a lot of notes on the guitar, and uh, how much is there left to do for the harmonica? Well, you could do rhythm stuff behind him, I guess, and when you're doing a, if you're in a situation with something like that, and then when it's your time to shine, you blow a solo. And then this leads, that leads to maybe the idea I had in my mind of making this video was to say, when you're, um, when you're playing with someone, you don't want to clutter up. Sorry about this vaping thing. I just do it out of reaction. I need to stop. It's a, a bad habit, but 67 and hell, you know, I've, I've gone through a lot of bad habits. And this is just one more to knock off. But anyway, probably this is too. Ginger ale or Pepsi or whatever. Everything. There was an old cartoon I saw once with a... I forgot where it came from, but uh, they, were, they were talking about the Betty Ford Foundation, and they're going on and on and on and about how great it is, and then the guy goes, oh, no more Demerol, no more fun at all. And I thought that was kind of funny. No more Demerol, no more fun at all. But, you know, it doesn't really have to be that way, because, for instance, our players, like us, um, we get this extra kick from blowing on the thing and, and breathing in, it's uh, like a runner's high. So, in other words, we're getting high, creating a sound, and that's not such a bad deal. I mean, when you think of it, um, it's pretty cool, really. Like, wow, so it's weird. Anyway, you know, so when it's time for your solo in a band, you know, don't be afraid to step out and shine. Usually you get uh, 24 bars in the solo, and then. But now, that wasn't so many notes. But what if I'd done it like, uh, like this, something like a. Okay, you know, some people might say it's fine, but there were no, there wasn't any space in there, especially the second time around. So, I think, um, now sometimes you're going to want to play uh, a, a bunch of notes, you know, all of a sudden, I mean, just all at once. So I don't hear any space at all in that except for notes, but what if that kind of a thing, okay, that that's cool, it's a contrast, I think it's too much for, for me, maybe I'm just being lazy, I don't know, 
but I, to me, I, my ears just it sound it just sounds kind of weird. But what if something like? Now, maybe I'm wrong, but I just think that sounds, uh, it's probably just a, a, a matter of taste. I mean, the guy from um, the Blues Travelers, he's considered, and I guess he is an excellent harmonica player, but I have no interest in trying to, to play that much myself. Uh, I guess it's good to know, but to play all those notes all in fast like that just, just never interested me. People like Big Walter, um, I mean, Little Walter, as great as he is, you know, my personal interest in, in love, I guess, for our players is more like Sonny Boy Williamson type or John Lee Williamson uh, for Sonny Boy or Big Walter, although I totally have a great love for Little Walter. But I mean, like when Big Walter does something like... Now I know there wasn't um, any separation, and there was all it was all music. But I mean, but still, it it just seems like it had uh, more. Uh, it just seemed like it had more flavor or something than if I had been going like. Or I, if I had been going. In other words, putting a bunch more, actually, every, crowding every note with another note. Instead of, like, giving it um, the space for it to resonate in uh, your ear, in the audience's ear. <laughs> Especially you hear that. Just that moment of separation between... Let that have, like, let that flavor of that note linger in your, I hate that word, linger, but, God, anyway, um, sorry to those that like it, but, so let it hang out, you know, for a little while in your, in your audio, auditory tract or whatever, <laughs> anyway, because you, these, what we're doing is we're trying to make sounds on this thing that we love, and that transfers to the audience that loves them. <laughs> Just those little slight pauses, slight moments of hesitation, slight... Up. But anyway, you get the idea, I hope. Um, there's those slight moments of hesitation and then getting in there, because it's not really hesitating, you know what you're doing, but you're just not crowding it. Like, just imagine a, a crowded subway somewhere. Wouldn't it be a more, more pleasant ride if the subway is not crowded and you're not having to scuffle just to even find standing room? Well, maybe it's like the notes feel the same way. Hey, man, give us some space here. <laughs> Instead of <laughs> maybe they appreciate that, you know. So I guess that's uh what it is tonight. It's just when you're um this is specifically uh, talking about you know solos, but um 
when you're well in this segment so far, but but when you're playing, um, you know, with other people, then um, before your solo comes, because sometimes you don't have one for a couple songs, and you might have two in one song, or whatever, and um, sometimes you might have none in the duo thing or whatever, or if you're playing solo, you're not taking one. I mean, playing with guitar or whatever. But the thing is, is that um, you have to then still be. You don't want to just uh, stand there waiting for your solo. So you have to learn, um, like with with when I was playing with with R.L. Burnside or other people and do things. But especially with when I would do this percussive thing, I go like. Anyway, because he had that percussive thing going on with his hand, uh, playing um, a lot of the stuff. So uh, I would just add a kind of a drum thing to that. I guess I should probably try to record, um, maybe play some of the stuff I did with him, uh, maybe on a CD player, and record that uh, on this thing. I know Paul, the piano player, did that with him. Um, worked out so. Um, I think I'll try that, and then I can talk a little bit about what I was doing with that. Because I, when he's singing and playing and stuff, I didn't want to keep going like... I mean, I had to come up with a basic thing. And sometimes do that. So, you know, when you're in a band thing, there's a saxophone player, a piano player, and it's you, and then the bass, guitar, and drums. I mean, it's six people, right? And um, so, you know, you wanna, you can double up stuff with a saxophone player. Like. Or you can just lay out with the saxophone, whatever y'all work out, you know, but, or the piano. But the, the thing is that, or you, nothing's talked about, which is generally the case, at least uh, in bands where people don't really see each other much. I mean, you have to just be on your own, and then you have to just sort of, sort of play it out. If one person's kind of a hog, and they want to take most of the, uh, the um, you know, the fills and stuff like that, well, that's going to happen, but, you know, you, sometimes you have to actually, you know, have, um, be aware of that. And then sometimes you have to make yourself, unless you want to be totally in, in the background, kind of put yourself in there. But hopefully that doesn't happen much. <laughs> like if somebody's going... Oh. Dun, 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 dun. Was last night I saw the best friend I ever had and then with the guitar player and the fill in my gun. And then the guy goes, last night, I saw the best friend I ever had. And then maybe the horn player goes. And then you, maybe you come back in when, when he comes to the file. And, and I guess I'll never, never see him again. Then everybody can do that. Anyway, it's about, about respect among the bandmates that you have. And, um, if you're doing a solo thing with your guitar, understanding, you know, what you can do with the harmonica, um, that you're capable of doing it when you're playing with, uh, that as a, on a rack, um, it's about, um, understanding if, you know, the, what the, the main person in the band expects, like the, maybe the lead singer, whoever is kind of in charge of the thing, expects out of you, uh, it's a matter of communication with, um, if you're the only, like, if it's only the guitar player, the singer, let's say, guitar, there's a couple singers, like, say, you're singing, and, and uh, he's singing the guitar player, singer, and then there's just him, and the bass and drums, that's four piece, so that's pretty simple, you can communicate, um, with him, and back and forth, but if you're getting into other, uh, you know, other people, like I said, a saxophone player, and sometimes even more, and a piano player, then, or even just a saxophone player, then you kind of have to work things out, you know, otherwise, um, you kind of have, you're going to be running into each other, but mainly, I guess, if there's anything I'd say to take away from this, the most important is, don't be afraid to not play, because not playing a note, don't be afraid to not play every, every note that you possibly can, so I should, I should phrase it, when you're trying to phrase these these um, little phrases to turn out to be music, uh, don't be afraid to not play 
uh, as many notes as you can fit in to 24 bars or 12 bars or through every song when you take a fill, when you're doing fills, you know. Let other people have their space, you have your space, and then during it, during your solo time, yeah, shine, step out and just blow your heart out and your soul out, but it don't have to be, that's true, Herbie, it's true, I know you and, um, you and old Carolina, is it Carolina over there you're dealing with, or is it, uh, Cherie, anyway, the thing is, is that, don't be afraid, there's less notes or more notes, so many, of the t so much of the time, and not playing a note is like still playing a note, because it's a, a pause in there, and that adds to the whole element of um of the song when it, you're not crowding um all the notes out so much they never want to date you again okay have a good morning evening afternoon and um i'll catch y'all next time i hope that um, this was some value to you guys bye bye